Lots of talk about alternative fuels at the LA and Detroit Motor Shows, but it's fair to say that Chrysler, yet again Chrysler, have come up with the ultimate alternative fuel car. We're talking not electric, not hydrogen, not nitrogen, not methane, but fuel cells. What, in layman's terms, Chris, is a car that runs on a fuel cell? A fuel cell is, uh, many of you may remember back in high school, chemistry. Uh, if you split water with electricity, you generate hydrogen and oxygen. A fuel cell does that in reverse. It combines hydrogen and oxygen to produce water and electricity. OK, but how does the car work okay. in practical terms? You turn up at a gas station or wherever, what do you put in the thing? OK, well, the problem has been not with the oxygen, because you get that from the air, just like we do in today's engines. The problem has been, where do you find hydrogen? You can't find it very easy, very easily at all. So we have a mechanism at uh, Chrysler, uh, technology development, where we take gasoline or petrol, store it on board the vehicle like we do today, so you can use all the, the same petrol stations that you find, and then we convert the petrol, the petrol into hydrogen on board the vehicle, transparently to the customer and then the hydrogen is consumed in the fuel cell to produce water and electricity so it's essentially putting the refinery for making hydrogen on the vehicle so that the customer doesn't have to go searching for a hydrogen station in vain sounds expensive you've got a, an, an onboard refinery that means a lot of uh, gadgets and gizmos that uh, you wouldn't normally have on a car how much more expensive does it make that that car well the the refinery is basically conventional technology you know spark plugs heat exchangers catalysts fuel injectors there's no rocket science under the hood under the bonnet of a car. Uh, the cost challenge is in the fuel cell. They've been used in space, but not on Earth for a good reason. They're very expensive. If you take a fuel cell and put it in a car today, it maybe cost $30,000 instead of $3,000, like for a conventional engine. OK. Uh, so 10 would, times too much. But uh, a few years ago, I seem to remember it would have been more like 50, 100 times more. So the cost is coming down. Cost has come down dramatically, as has the size. So we feel in, sufficiently encouraged by the pace of progress to think that if we can indeed use gasoline as a fuel or petrol as a fuel to start off, then this technology has a lot of merit going for it. It can be extremely efficient, extremely clean, quiet, uh, require very little maintenance because there's no oil change, for example, uh, and still provide the long range and the quick refueling that we've come to expect from today's cars. So basically the best of an engine and the best of a battery combined. Performance and economy, very quickly. Fuel economy, we expect to be at least 50% better, better than today's engines, even though it uses the same fuel. Um, performance is still an issue. It's a still an issue hanging out there. Start up on a very cold morning. It's like a big catalytic converter under your hood of your car. So it still takes several minutes to warm up, which is unacceptable for the customer. So we're working aggressively on trying to reduce the startup time to something maybe less than a minute, so that you, can, you only need a very small battery on board the vehicle to get you started, rather than a large one like we need today.